Hi, I'm Megan Brown, and I'm a program manager on Project Roam. Today I'll be talking to you about activity APIs and pick up where I left off. I'll quickly go over what Project Roam is, um, explain user activities, tell you how they're going to be used in the Windows 10 Fall Creators update, um, explain to you how you can use this behavior in your own applications, and then give you a quick sneak peek of what's coming up with Windows Timeline. So what is Project Roam? Our goal for Project Roam is to deliver a personal OS that's not tied to a particular platform or a device. <clears throat> Imagine a world where you and your users, it doesn't matter what device you're on or what platform you're using, that you can continue your work or project across any of these devices. At our core, we aim to be a platform that serves you, the developer. We know that your users are using multiple devices all the time and that they bring their own devices to work and play. We provide you with APIs to help break down the silos between these devices. The easiest way to think about Project Roam is an umbrella of functionality of experiences happening now and later. The remote control and sessions uh, experiences are the ones happening now, and my colleague Carmen Forsman will be going into a similar video uh, to explain these to you, and I encourage you to go check it out. The activity APIs are the ones that I'll be explaining to you, and these are the experiences happening later. I'll be giving you an overview of how this works and demonstrating how you can use them in your applications to increase engagement in your apps. Let's talk about a typical day. So our time each day is spread across multiple devices. We might start in the morning watching TV, use our phones on the bus ride to work, switch over to a PC once we get to work, and then in the evening once we get home, it's back to our television, our tablet, and our phones. When a user's attention is divided across so many different devices, how can you, as an app developer, get users to re-engage with your applications on each device that they pick up? Project Roam and user activities seek to solve that problem for you. Think of a user activity as a unit of engagement. What is the verb if you were to describe what a user is doing in your application? We want that, no matter what that verb is, for you to be able to continue it across all your devices. To leverage user activities, you need three things. You need an activity ID, an activation URI, and some display text to show the user. This lets you create a notification as seen on the desktop snippet on the right. Now I'll give you a quick demo of how this functionality is being used in the Windows 10 Fall Creators update with Pick Up Where I Left Off. So to uh, show you this, I have two Surface machines here both logged into Windows and Cortana with the same Microsoft account, and an iPad Pro uh, has, that has the Word application on it also logged into my Microsoft account. So I'm going to navigate to our uh, RSS Reader application for Rome that uses the user activity APIs, and I'm just going to go and navigate to a different article. Now if I go over here to my other Surface Pro 4 device, I can open the Action Center, and I see that it's prompting me to resume this activity on a separate device. If I switch over to my iPad, I can open up Microsoft Word, and I'm just going to open up this text file that I was working on previously. Now jumping back over to the Surface Pro 4, I see that it's now prompting me again for this activity, and I can open it up. And once Word loads, I'll be able to continue editing this document on a completely new device. Now that you've seen how this functionality is uh, used in practice, let's see how you can implement it in your own applications. As I previously mentioned, there are three properties that you need to create a user activity. The activity ID provides the context on where the user is in your application. In this case, we're creating an activity for the main page. If an activity for the main page has already been created, we'll get handed back that existing activity to update. Then we're going to set some display text, which is what's going to be displayed to the user in that Action Center notification. Then we'll set the activation URI, which is where the user gets directed once they've selected the notification. So in that demo that I did, opening word would be that activation URI. Once we've set these properties, we need to save the user activity and create the session. Creating the session returns a user activity, and as long as the app holds on to this, we'll be able to accrue act activity engagement by adding new activities uh, to the existing session. 
Now let's give a quick demo of where this is going in the future. You may have heard of Windows Timeline from Build or other Microsoft events. A timeline is a richer experience of your task view that takes advantage of user activities to show you a chronological view of what you've been doing across your devices. So if we go back over here to my Surface Pro 4, here I can open up my task view, and here I can see the different activities that I've been working on in the past few days and re-engage with any of these activities. And some of them are local to this device, and some of them, uh, like the previous demos that we saw with the RSS reader application, are activities that come from other devices. So the user activity APIs, uh, along with our iOS and MS Graph SDKs, are being released along with the Windows 10 Fall Creators update. So I encourage you to go check those out and learn more. I hope you're as excited about Project Realm as I am. And for you to learn more about user activities or any of our other functionality, please go check out our website and figure out how you can increase engagement in your applications across devices. Thank you.